2004 and act actually 2002. And I have interesting stories about how I started there. I'm a mom of four. I'm a mom empowerment coach. I actually started a crash today. So when Doc was sending me all the messages, I said, Doc, hey, you will not even understand why I said yes. Because if I look at the things I need to do in this period, I wouldn't say yes. But I said yes, and I'm so happy to be here today. Without talking so much about myself, please, I hope you're looking in the chat box and, you're, and you are taking note of all the different people coming from all the places. I'm so, so happy to have us all here. And I walk with time. Today, we are going to be having different speakers. And those speakers are also going to be part of the panel. Um, we are going to have myself speak. And then I'll call on Caroline Moazi. And then we'll have a little break, 9.25 to 9.30. Then we will now have a third speaker. You mean, so each you of mean those speakers... You mean 19, eh? 7, 7, 7.30. 7 7.30, <laughs> no, we will go, hey? We will not stay here till 9. <laughs> so um, 7.25 to 7.30, we have a short game. And then we have the third speaker. And then we have the fourth speaker. And then we have a panel discussion for just a short time. So the speakers got 20, 20 minutes to speak. But I think with my the rights bestowed on me as the MC, I'm going to shorten it to 15 so that we can have the audience talk a lot in the panel discussion. Doc, I know you support me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, because we need to engage a lot with the audience. We need to know their questions. That's why they are here. They are here to get answers. Right, guys? They are here to get answers to some things. and. Um, to make it a bit worthwhile, I would like to ask any speaker who can finish a little bit earlier so that we can have more time for the panel discussion, which on this program has been slated for 8.10 to 8.30 before we say our goodbye. So um, I, on the list, I am the first person to speak. And I will say that it's such an honor for me it's such an honor for me to be here today, to be part of something, uh, to be part of something starting for the first time. So today I'm part of my crutch starting for the first time, and I'm also part of this starting for the first time. It's amazing. So that's why I say that in this match, I am actually marching into glory. If I can have, if I can be part of two starter ups then there is something wonderful waiting for me. Okay. So everyone, I want to make this a bit interactive. I want to first of all ask you, why are you a speaker? Why do you want to be a speaker for those who are just starting? If you have a simple answer, you can put on the group, on the chat. If you don't have, just think about it. Just think about these questions. Anyone you have the answer to, put it in the chat box. Why, amongst every other thing, you want to be a speaker? It looks like Pambana wants to say something. Pambana, do you want to say something? Anyway, let me continue. How did you start speaking? Do you remember how you started speaking? For those who are speaking already, do you remember how you started speaking? Is there anybody here who, before the age of 10, already knew that they will be speakers? No. no. I'm not seeing any interaction in the chat box. Yeah. I'm saying no. I can I can give a testimony if that's allowed. Who is this? Who is speaking? It's, it's Tabang, eh? Okay, Tabang. I would like to hear you give that testimony. Yes, um, yes I'm, I'm a finance professional. So I was asked to, to present the numbers to, to the board. And for the first time, I had to do that. And uh, there was a lot of stammering, sweating, uh, uh, and, and yeah, it was a terrible experience. 
So that's that's that. Thank. Okay. So you said you the first time you had to speak, it it was not nice at all, and you had a a not nice experience. So you stopped. Butterflies in the stomach. Yeah. Butterflies in the uh, stomach. As sounds, said, like a push, push. sounds like a push factor, Tabang, eh? <laughs> okay. So that pushed it, it, you. It was. If, it, if I had my choice, if I had my choice, I wouldn't have. But yeah. Okay. As a push factor. <laughs> okay. So I, I what I'm hearing there is that you have this uh, never die spirit. Something has challenged you and you want to challenge it back. That's wonderful. So let's take a quick poll. On, in the chat, if you are speaking as your main business, please, can you put one? If you are speaking as a part puzzle, please, can you put two? So if you are doing speaking as your main business, put one. If you are speaking as a part hustle, put two. Okay. So a lot of people are speaking as their main business. Thank you, Lisa, for this uh, feedback on why what you, why you're here you want to improve your speaking and yeah ultimately okay that's good uh what about uh, that <laughs> basil he was looking for something even if it's to pave the way for yourself there's a reason why so those that are speaking okay i see doc is saying he's doing full-time speaking lecturing consulting preaching coaching that's amazing um I wanted to also ask anybody who is already speaking, can you just say um, what you speak about and why? You can just write in the chat box what you speak about and why. What you speak about and why. But still says to give information to others in the finance, right? That's it. You're always speaking for a reason. Can you just write in the chat box what you speak about and why? I can imagine that some of these questions I'm asking is the first time you're thinking about it. The reason I'm starting to ask these questions is first of all, for us to think about what we are doing. Because my task this evening is just to encourage us all. It's just to encourage us all in the journey and leave uh, some tips on how we can be better with the state that we have chosen to allow to take our time. I hope to also share one or two stories that will help you be encouraged in your own journey. But still, people look down upon you because you're only 14. Don't worry. They will, the same people will look up to you soon. Okay? Yeah. Those people who are looking down, they'll look up before you do it. Just be focused. And uh, I'm hoping that what I'll say this evening will encourage you. So the other question is, you say, I said, I said, um, uh, what do you speak about and why? That why, I want to elaborate on it. Because that why determines how you handle whatever you do. So in 2002, I was in the university and I met a girl who told me that she would like me to MC for her. And I had never MC'd. I've never even looked at the MCs with any interest. You know, like how you will see somebody doing something and you keep hoping that one day you will grow up to be able to do that. I never had such interests. And I quickly said to her, no, 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 I'm not an MC. She said, I know, but the way you talk and make people laugh, you can be a good MC. Please help me. Help me because I can't pay the money that the others are asking for. So I was curious. I, I was curious that she could come to me. And this lady, we are not friends. In fact, when she called my name, I was surprised that she knew my name. So I said to her, you know what? I don't have a party dress. And she laughed and said, what do you need? You just need to dress up. You don't need to make anything fancy. Just come. You will do it well. 2002, I agreed. I accepted that invitation because I was curious. Why would this girl call me? After that party, she paid me. I didn't ask her for money. And in those days, thank you was just enough. I actually would enjoy myself. I knew lots of jokes. So, that, so I would just share it and the people would laugh and laugh. It was such a nice party. But as I was going, 
I, 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 she paid me. I didn't even realize the symbolic, uh, the, the symbol of that payment until years down the line, when I found that I just continued now speaking from that party because after some days, some boys came to me and invited me to be the female MC at a show in the school. This is a show I had never been able to attend. I had never been able to pay for it because I thought to myself, even if I can afford to pay for it, I don't have the money to buy the right uh, attire to attend the party. So the first time I'm attending the school show was to be the MC and they paid me. And from then I kept not attending other shows as MC. That is how I started my speaking journey. I don't want you to forget that I just met this girl. We are not friends. And she just said to me, the way you talk, I know you can be MC. I started MCing at weddings, at corporate events. And each time I finish MC, I'll come out and I'll be like, wow, I'm just good at this. Because I know that I don't prepare much. I just gather all my jokes, look at the program and fix it wherever I think, fix the different jokes wherever I think that they would work. And each time I get people saying, wow, this was such a, an enjoyable day. You are such a good MC. And I'll be feeling so cool with myself. This was back in Nigeria. I came to South Africa with big dreams that I'll be able to do this, do that, do that. Before I knew it, I realized that it's not like the same. One, the language barrier and all the other things that kind of make you remember that it's not always as easy as you think it will be. I started losing faith in myself. I lost so much confidence. I thought to myself, you don't know how to speak the, any African language here. You don't know how to speak Africans. So how would you speak in this place? Then I started having children also. When I finished having children, I was not thinking of what I can do because I had spent many years being a, 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 a seed at home mom. What happened to me was another testimony because I had lost hope that anything about speaking can be for me. One day I was at an event where my daughters were dancing and as we were waiting for their time, somebody just walked up to me where I was standing with the other people and said to me, please, can you MC for these people when, when it's their time? Because there were different dance groups. So we were wait, waiting for my daughter's dance group and this man walks to me. I had to look around to say, who are you talking to? He said, you, can you MC when it's time? Because I need to leave now. Can you not do it? I was like, why me? Like I was shocked. But this is my miracle. And that's why I'm sharing to you. It's from this miracle that I got, I get my why. Every time I look back at how I started speaking, it's a Sorry, I just want to quickly look at the person and make it this noise to mute the person. Uh, mute. Okay. Well, who else is making noise? Uh, so when this second miracle happened, uh, that was when I realized that there must be a spiritual reason why this had to happen in a country where I didn't think it was possible. And even the first audience I spoke to, they were 93% Africans. I couldn't speak Africans past Kuyemara, Almao. But they were laughing at my jokes and it was a day well done. So from there, people saw me and I started emceeing and I started emceeing. Then I started introducing shows and I started emceeing. That's how my speaking journey started in South Africa. Because it was a surreal experience for me, I realized that my speaking is a call and speaking is my platform to live the life that my creator has meant for me to, re to live. Because of this experience I've explained to you now, I take my speaking seriously. Now, and how? what do I talk about? What would I be talking about? Apart from doing MCing, what else can I talk about? 
Then I found myself being very passionate about motherhood and parenting because, firstly, of my journey. My journey in motherhood helped me to see that there is so much that needs to be done so that motherhood can be respected, motherhood can be supported because mothers are the ones who raise the next generation. Fathers are also there to support, but because the children spend more time with their mothers and in most African communities, they would also even say things in Proverbs. I realized that the way we raise our children, we determine the way our communities will be. So we are building the society. And that's how I also joined that as what I speak about. Now, just to get back to trying to encourage anybody here, I want to pick up some points from the story I've told. Firstly, is that Pauline is not just because, um, I mean, speaking is not something one can excel in so much if you have not seen the use for, the, for others. When you see your speaking as a call, you will find out that it will affect the way you take care of yourself and the speaking. It will affect the message that you bring. Because for me, from having that experience, I now started seeking God's uh, revelation for the message I will give anytime I have an audience. So even this evening, I, I asked, what can I do? And, I, and what I had was to share, share your own experience, share that when you are embracing your authenticity, that there will be no barriers. I thought that I wouldn't be able to speak in South Africa. I thought that because I didn't know the language, that I wouldn't be able to. But because I embraced my authenticity, I found myself there and it broke that barrier for me. I thought that they wouldn't understand my accent. And in those days, I used to speak faster. Now I'm learning to speak slower. But even in my fast pace, they enjoyed my speech and people started calling me. So when speaking is your call, you should never worry where you are. You should know that that speaking will make way. It will tear down protocols. It will uh, remove any barrier that would have been there. But there are principles that you must follow. And that is that you need to appreciate that the speaking is important and it's a core and it's a talent that needs to be developed. So because I realized that this is actually a gift that God has given me to use and shine light, I started thinking of how best to make it work, how best to make it, how best to be good at it. And at this juncture, I want to introduce three Ds that will help you in uh, the way you see your speaking journey. The first D is discover. In discover, I want you to look at yourself and the gifts you have around your speaking. Do you see what I said? The gifts you have around your speaking. So speaking can be a gift or a skill that you're acquiring, but there is usually a gift around it. When you see that there is a gift around it, the gift can be that you sound the way you sound. It can be the way you are with words. It can be your storytelling ability. It can be how articulate you are. Many things around that gift. You need to discover that and know how that can be your selling point. Because in speaking, there are lots of speakers and they are everywhere. If you do not appreciate your own uniqueness, you will want to copy everybody. You want to copy everybody. Now, some people from Africa try to speak English like they are white. And I mean, if you can learn that accent, it's, it's okay. But if you're learning it because you don't believe in your own accent, then there's a bit of a problem there. So I just want to encourage you to embrace your own authenticity and discover the gifts around your speaking so that you can know where it fits more. There are people who speak uh, spoken words, 
But when they are presenting other, other things, they don't, they don't really send message home. So understand where your gift works the most. When you have discovered that, develop it. And I feel like staying long on that second D, D for develop. I want to stay long there because I believe that most of the people here are Africans. And when, most times when you talk Africa, you talk poverty or you talk body issues or you talk ignorance. Because of it, we find that most African speakers are not excelling the way they are supposed to. Why? Because they don't maybe appreciate the need to develop the speaking. You can know how to speak as naturally. You can know the content you're speaking about, but there's always something to improve upon. Always something to improve upon. And these days with technology, you can actually do stuff even by yourself. You can buy books. You can listen to people on YouTube. You can, you can, you can go for trainings. You can go for coachings. But even if you don't have money for coachings, and things that are so expensive, there is always something you can do. You can go to the library and borrow books. You can borrow books. You can borrow, uh, you can listen to YouTube because no matter how expensive things are, people still find time for Facebook and for YouTube. So we have to determine what we do in that YouTube. And that comes from if you understand why you're speaking. If you understand why you're speaking, you will know the need to develop it. So people, because they have spoken a lot in their local areas, they think that they are now experts. People call them there, call them there, and praise them. You know how we praise people in Africa. Then they think they have learned them. But they cannot speak outside their local community. Many other nations are trying to tap into what is in Africa, apart from us. Because most of us are not patient enough to learn how to improve ourselves. This is where my main aim is. My main aim of this talk today is to encourage uh, developing. Encourage developing. Today, make sure. Don't say, I've been looking for people to, to I've been looking for people to mentor me. I don't find. No, now you can be mentored by people who don't know you. By when you read their books, by when you listen to their YouTube or learn a lot of things from there. And if they are not speaking English like you, you don't have to speak English like them before you can excel. These days, they're even looking for African accents to sell. So believe in your authenticity. I'm the MC, and I said I'll be strict with time, but I can see that the time is almost against me. But I want to drop the third D for you. I've said the first D that you should discover your gift as a speaker and what works around that, the gifts that are around that speaking gift. The second is that you should develop it. It's going to cost you money. For you to excel, it will, it will cost you money, but that gift is going to make way for you the more you develop it. The third is that you should deploy it. That means when you have finished de developing it, you have to reach out. It's not every time that you speak and you'll be paid, but you have to reach out and speak up. Speak up for good things. Speak up for uh, things that will benefit the society, for your family. Speak up, support other people. Speak up about issues that are affecting us because we are not just there to make money because of uh, whatever for our own good. Speaking is powerful. Speaking is influential. If you're a speaker, you are an influencer because people reach out to you for your ideologies, for your opinions, for your expert advice. People want to listen to you. So that speaking is your own platform to shine light, your own platform to educate, to equip, to empower. So that, that's my 3D. Discover, develop, and deploy. Don't keep quiet when you need to speak up with wisdom about something that will improve our society. In conclusion, I just want to emphasize that the uniqueness in speaking. Most times, um, we take ourselves for granted or we think we have reached the epic. There is always room for growth. A speaker is an influencer. And an influencer keeps influencing. And as he's influencing positively, you're shining light. We all are like candlelights. If you put off the light of another, it does not make your own shine brighter. So we must hold hands and help put the light in each other's candle so that together we can illuminate the room. This is not my quote, but I just want to share it to close. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Jideka, please let me see a round of applause as we appreciate the 3D. I love the 3D <laughs> model. I'm sure a lot of people have taken away something. Um, we have uh, our next speaker lined up. Uh, Ms. Jidega, do you want to introduce our next speaker or do you want to take some reactions? I can take uh, uh, one reaction. I can take one reaction while Caroline is getting set. Excellent. Uh, otherwise, the person can ask where we're in the panel. But if there is any reaction, I'm ready to take it. Okay. I believe because this is our first time, people are quiet and absorbing everything that they are receiving. So it's okay. We will go on to the next speaker, Caroline Yamwaya Mwazi. Caroline, I met uh, last year and I've always enjoyed listening to her speak. The simple way, but articulate way that she gives her presentation in a very wise manner, I always enjoy. So when I saw that she was going to be one of the speakers today, I'm like, wow, that would be great to be in the same room with Caroline. Caroline, you're looking great this evening. And uh, I love your background. You're welcome. So she's uh, Director and Chief Change Catalyst of Hero Consult Limited, a Kenyan management and training consult consulting company that commenced operations in 2007 and serves clients within and outside Africa. She's passionate about strategy, governance, finance, leadership, and personal development, and serves on the boards of the Association of Startup and SME Enablers of Kenya, ASEC, and the Kenya Association of Women Business Owners. She started speaking in public while in kindergarten and has been a Toastmaster, serving as Vice President, Public Relations for Kwanzaa, Kenya Toastmasters Club from 2009 to 2010. She's previously a member of the National Speakers Association USA. Caroline is currently a member of the Professional Speakers Association and the Virtual Speakers Association International. Her interests include health and fitness, the performing arts and personal development. If you look at her, you will see that she's very, uh, she's very, hold and feet. So she's walking her talk. And today she's going to be giving us a lot to chew on. I hope you have your paper and your pen because she's not the kind of person that when you're listening to, you just go like this. You have to have your paper and pen to take notes because she's going to give us the story of how she built her speaking business. Ladies and gentlemen, and the best way you know how to do it Give a round of applause to Caroline. You can put an emoji there in the chat box. I am unmuted, so I will clap for her and on behalf of everyone. Caroline, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Take it away. 